Nearly 15 years have passed since Susan Boyle's unforgettable audition on Britain's Got Talent, yet her passion for singing remains as fervent as ever. From the moment she stepped onto the stage and captivated the world with her stunning rendition of I Dreamed a Dream, Susan's life underwent a profound transformation, catapulting her into the spotlight and forever altering the course of her destiny. She became richer and more attractive, completely different from the homely Susan, with a modest appearance 15 years ago. Join us to learn about Susan Boyle's exciting current life after her explosive fame. Susan Boyle's meteoric rise to fame in 2009 is the stuff of Legion. She spent much of her life quietly nurturing her passion for music while working mundane jobs. However, everything changed when she stepped onto the stage of Britain's Got Talent during its third series. The audience, the judges, and indeed the world at large were caught completely off guard by Susan's unassuming appearance and unpretentious demeanor. As she stood there, nerves evident, few could have predicted what was about to unfold. Then, she began to sing, her voice, rich, powerful, and imbued with raw emotion, filled the auditorium, captivating everyone within earshot. It was a moment of pure magic as Susan delivered a stunning rendition of I Dreamed a Dream from the musical Les Miserables. The reaction was nothing short of extraordinary. Simon Cowell's initial skepticism melted away, replaced by a look of sheer astonishment. The audience erupted into thunderous applause, and the other judges were left speechless. Susan Boyle had not just impressed, she had left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness. Within days, footage of Susan's audition spread like wildfire across the internet, quickly becoming the most watched YouTube video of 2009. Surpassing even the inauguration of President Obama, her performance resonated deeply with millions around the globe, striking a chord that transcended cultural boundaries. While Susan ultimately claimed second place in Britain's Got Talent, her journey was far from over. In fact, it was just beginning. Riding the wave of her newfound fame, she released her debut album, aptly titled I Dreamed a Dream. The album shattered records, garnering the highest number of pre-orders in Amazon's history up to that point. Upon its release, it soared to the top of charts worldwide, solidifying Susan's status as a bona fide sensation. Yet, despite her monumental success, Susan Boyle's trajectory hasn't been without its challenges. In the years following her initial burst into the spotlight, she has faced the pressures of fame navigating the often tumultuous waters of the entertainment industry. While she has continued to release music and perform on stages around the world, her presence in the media spotlight has waned somewhat. Nevertheless, Susan's legacy endures. With over 120 gold and platinum albums to her name and sales exceeding 25 million copies across more than 35 countries, she has left an indelible mark on the music industry. In 2024, Susan Boyle stands as a beacon of resilience, talent, and advocacy, continuing to leave an indelible mark on the world through her music and her unwavering commitment to spreading awareness about Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD. Her journey from a small town in Scotland to international fame is a testament to the transformative power of perseverance and self-belief. Raised in a loving family with deep musical roots, Susan inherited her passion for singing from her father, a World War II veteran and miner who often entertained patrons at the local pub, the Bishop Blaze. Her mother, Bridget, a skilled pianist, nurtured Susan's musical talents from an early age, instilling in her a love for music that would shape her future. Despite her innate talent, Susan's journey was not without challenges. Growing up, she struggled with bullying and feelings of inadequacy, exacerbated by what she believed to be a learning disability stemming from oxygen deprivation at birth. These challenges persisted into adulthood, leading Susan to leave school with few qualifications and grapple with a sense of self-doubt. 
However, Susan's life took a transformative turn when, at the age of 52 or 53, she received a correct diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome, ASD. This revelation brought clarity to her experiences, dispelling misconceptions and empowering her to embrace her unique perspective. With her newfound understanding, Susan became a vocal advocate for autism awareness, using her platform to educate others and challenge stereotypes. Throughout her journey, Susan received invaluable guidance from vocal coach Fred O'Neill, a respected figure in the West Lothian community. Under his mentorship, she honed her craft and developed her extraordinary voice, laying the foundation for her future success. It was O'Neill who recognized Susan's potential and encouraged her to pursue her dreams of singing professionally. In 2002, Susan embarked on a journey that would change her life forever, beginning her vocal lessons with O'Neill. Over the years, she dedicated herself to mastering her craft, pouring her heart and soul into every note she sang. Her perseverance and talent culminated in a groundbreaking audition on Britain's Got Talent in 2009, where she captivated the world with her soul-stirring rendition of I Dreamed a Dream. Her aspirations for a musical career took a pivotal turn in 1995 when she auditioned for My Kind of People, a television program that showcased amateur talent. Excited at the prospect of sharing her gift with a wider audience, Susan poured her heart into her performance, choosing to sing I Don't Know How to Love Him from the beloved musical Jesus Christ Superstar. However, her hopes were dashed when the host, Michael Barrymore, failed to recognize her talent and instead resorted to ridicule and mockery during her appearance. Despite the setback, Susan's resolve remained unshaken, fueling her determination to pursue her dreams with unwavering perseverance. In 1998, Susan took a bold step toward her musical aspirations, investing all her savings in recording three demo tracks at Heartbeat Studio in Midlothian. With determination and a steadfast belief in her talent, she poured her heart and soul into each recording, including soulful renditions of classics such as Killing Me Softly, Cry Me a River, and Don't Cry for Me, Argentina. Armed with her demo tapes, Susan embarked on a relentless pursuit of opportunity, sending her recordings to every avenue she could find, from radio and television competitions to record labels. Her perseverance paid off when her demo track Cry Me a River earned a coveted spot in the Sounds of West Lothian album, a community-aided music project celebrating the turn of the millennium in 1989. This early success served as a testament to Susan's talent and determination, affirming her belief in the power of her voice to transcend barriers and captivate audiences. Auditioning in Glasgow, Scotland, as contestant number 4322, Susan's nerves threatened to derail her dreams before she even stepped onto the stage. At 47 years old, she felt the weight of societal expectations and ageism pressing down on her, almost convincing her to abandon her aspirations altogether. Her vocal coach recounted how she had previously skipped auditioning for The X Factor, convinced that her chances were slim due to the show's emphasis on looks rather than talent. However, something stirred within Susan, a burning desire to break free from the confines of her ordinary life and pursue her passion for music. Motivated by the memory of her beloved mother, who had always encouraged her musical aspirations, Susan resolved to take a chance and audition for Britain's Got Talent. It was a decision fueled by love, determination, and a longing to honor her mother's legacy. As she stepped onto the stage, Susan was met with skeptical glances from both the audience and the judges. Judge Amanda Holden later recalled the atmosphere as one of cynicism, with few expecting much from the unassuming woman before them. Simon Cowell, known for his harsh critiques, openly expressed regret at his initial impression of Susan, admitting years later that his preconceptions were unwarranted and regrettable. With the first notes of the song, her voice filled the auditorium, rich with emotion and raw talent. The audience, initially skeptical, 
was quickly swept away by the sheer power and beauty of her vocals. A wave of emotion washed over the crowd, prompting them to rise to their feet in a spontaneous eruption of applause and cheers. For Susan, who had spent much of her life singing in church choirs and local gatherings, the overwhelming response was nothing short of astonishing. As she stood there amidst the thunderous applause, she struggled to comprehend the magnitude of what was happening. It was a moment of validation, a realization that her dreams were within reach. In the aftermath of her audition, Susan's life changed in ways she could never have imagined. One of the first to take notice was Elaine Page, the legendary British singer whose success Susan had long admired. Page expressed interest in recording a duet with Susan, a gesture that left her humbled and overjoyed. Buoyed by her initial success, Susan sailed through to the semifinals of Britain's Got Talent. On May 24, 2009, she took to the stage once again, this time delivering a hauntingly beautiful rendition of Memory from the musical Cats. Her performance struck a chord with audiences, earning her the highest number of votes and securing her a coveted spot in the finals. Despite emerging as a favorite to win the competition, Susan ultimately finished in second place, narrowly losing out to Diversity, a UK-based dance troupe. The disappointment was palpable, but Susan refused to let it define her. Reflecting on her journey a decade later, she expressed disbelief at the trajectory her life had taken, admitting that she had never imagined she would still be performing and making albums. Indeed, Susan's journey was far from over. True to Simon Cowell's whispered assurance, she secured a record contract shortly after the competition, launching her career as a recording artist. Almost immediately after the competition ended, Susan embarked on a whirlwind tour, performing in 20 out of 24 scheduled concerts as part of the Britain's Got Talent Tour. It was a grueling schedule, but Susan approached each performance with the same passion and dedication that had endeared her to audiences during the show. Her resilience in the face of adversity was evident, her voice soaring with emotion and vitality night after night. As the dust settled on the Britain's Got Talent tour, Susan found herself thrust into the spotlight as a newfound sensation in the music industry. Despite being relatively new to the world of fame and stardom, she exuded confidence and poise that belied her status as a newcomer. According to the Belfast Telegraph, she carried herself with the grace and self-assurance of a seasoned veteran, captivating audiences with her magnetic stage presence and undeniable talent. On November 23, 2009, Susan released her highly anticipated debut album, I Dreamed a Dream, marking a significant milestone in her burgeoning career. The album, named after the iconic song that had catapulted her to fame, was met with critical acclaim and commercial success. In 2010, Susan made history by becoming the first female artist to have a top-ranking album simultaneously in both the UK and the US. Moreover, her album achieved the remarkable feat of reaching the number one spot twice within less than 12 months, a testament to the enduring appeal of her music and the depth of her talent. Susan's meteoric rise to fame did not go unnoticed on the global stage. In 2010, she was named the world's seventh most influential person, a recognition of her impact and influence on popular culture. The following year, she climbed even higher in the ranks, reaching the third spot as the highest-ranked woman. It was a testament to Susan's extraordinary journey and the profound impact she had made on audiences worldwide. According to her vocal coach, upbeat and inspirational, songs would have better suited Susan's uplifting spirit and vibrant personality. He believed that the iconic I Dreamed a Dream might have been better reserved for a later album, allowing Susan to explore a broader range of musical styles and themes. Additionally, he noted that certain songs, such as Wild Horses, did not necessarily showcase Susan's vocal abilities to their fullest potential, suggesting that she sang a tone lower than her natural range. 
Despite these critiques, Susan's vocal coach emphasized her exceptional technique and performance on the album, acknowledging her ability to deliver each song with grace and precision. He expressed a personal preference for songs like In His Eyes, from Jekyll and Hyde, suggesting that they might have showcased Susan's vocal prowess more effectively. In the years following her debut, Susan continued to release music at a prolific pace, with eight additional albums spanning from 2010 to 2019. Each album showcased Susan's versatility as an artist, featuring a diverse range of musical styles and genres. However, Susan's relentless dedication to her craft was not without its toll. As she toured the world to promote her album 10 in early 2020, the looming threat of the COVID-19 pandemic forced her to make a difficult decision. Recognizing that her health placed her at higher risk of severe symptoms, Susan made the difficult choice to self-isolate, prioritizing her well-being above all else. Throughout her journey, Susan's vocal coach observed her evolution as both an artist and an individual. Initially anxious about how she would handle the pressures of fame, he was heartened to see Susan's resilience and growth over time. Despite her sensitive nature, Susan learned to navigate the spotlight with grace and confidence, finding solace in her music and the unwavering support of her fans. Despite her remarkable talent, Susan found herself grappling with the overwhelming demands and expectations of the entertainment industry, leading to a period of personal struggle and introspection. Following her runner-up finish on Britain's Got Talent, Susan experienced a tumultuous period, struggling to come to terms with the intense scrutiny and attention thrust upon her. The weight of expectation took its toll, culminating in a three-day stay at the Priory, a private psychiatric clinic in London. Although Susan later downplayed the significance of her time at the Priory, referring to it as a nice rest, it was clear that she needed support to navigate the challenges of her newfound fame. In the years that followed, Susan underwent a journey of self-discovery and personal growth, learning to cope with the pressures of celebrity life. By 2014, she had developed healthier coping mechanisms and a greater sense of self-control, enabling her to manage the demands of her career with greater ease. One notable aspect of Susan's transformation was her commitment to improving her physical health. In 2016, she revealed that she had lost a significant amount of weight, embarking on a journey to lead a healthier lifestyle. By making conscious choices to cut out processed sugars and incorporate more exercise into her routine, Susan shed over two stone, or approximately 12 kilograms, demonstrating her dedication to her well-being. In 2021, Susan's commitment to her health reached new heights, with her revealing a further weight loss of over 50 pounds or 22 kilograms. This remarkable achievement was accompanied by a candid discussion on the British breakfast TV talk show Lorraine, where Susan opened up about her battle with type 2 diabetes, which she had been diagnosed in 2012. Determined to overcome the condition, Susan made significant lifestyle changes, including eliminating sugary foods and prioritizing regular exercise such as walking and cycling. Moreover, Susan's dedication to her health extended to her advocacy for COVID-19 vaccination. After self-isolating for a year due to the pandemic, Susan received her vaccination in March 2021, urging her fans to do the same. Her commitment to protecting herself and others from the virus underscored her newfound sense of responsibility as a public figure and role model. Besides, Susan's devotion to her mother extended beyond her passing, as she lovingly cared for her mother's beloved Persian cat, Pebbles. Until its passing in 2016, it was a solemn vow that Susan made to her mother, a promise to keep Pebbles close and cherish the memory of her beloved companion. In the wake of Pebbles' passing, Susan's heartache was compounded by the loss of another feline companion. Despite her best efforts to provide a loving home, Susan's new cat managed to sneak out one fateful night in 2016. 
Distraught and desperate, Susan's cries for help echoed through the night, drawing the attention of kind-hearted neighbors who came to her aid. Together, they managed to reunite Susan with her beloved pet, a moment of relief amidst the turmoil of loss and uncertainty. Reflecting on her late rise to fame, Susan attributed much of her success to her promise to stay close to her mother while she was alive. Her mother's passing in 2007 at the age of 91 marked a profound turning point in Susan's life, setting her on a path that would ultimately lead to international acclaim and recognition. The decade following her mother's passing was characterized by rapid success and unprecedented achievements, a testament to Susan's unwavering determination and the enduring influence of her mother's love and guidance. However, amidst the triumphs, Susan also faced her fair share of tribulations. The loss of her older sister, Bridget Birdie McCaw, in 2015, after a valiant battle with cancer, dealt a devastating blow to Susan and her family. The tragedy prompted Susan to put her career and album release on hold as she grappled with the profound grief of losing a beloved sibling. Compounding Susan's hardships was a rift with her brother, Gary, in 2013, stemming from financial disputes and familial tensions. Allegations of financial demands strained their relationship, leading to a period of estrangement and discord. However, in 2016, a chance encounter at Heathrow Airport would mark the beginning of a reconciliation between Susan and Gary. United by a shared sense of familial bond and mutual understanding, the siblings set aside their differences, forging a renewed connection built on love and forgiveness. In an unexpected twist of fate, Susan unintentionally became the subject of public interest when fans began joking about Scottish singer Louis Capaldi's resemblance to her. The light-hearted banter reached its peak following BBC Scotland's Hogmanay concert on New Year's Eve in 2023, when a social media comment jokingly suggested that Louis Capaldi bore a striking resemblance to Susan Boyle. Taking the jest in stride, Louis Capaldi responded with good humor, posting a playful video where he exaggeratedly mimicked Susan's mannerisms, accompanied by a tongue-in-cheek caption poking fun at the comparison. While the humorous comparison garnered attention online, Susan chose not to engage directly with the playful banter. Instead, she remained focused on her charitable endeavors, quietly lending her support to various causes close to her heart. Through her involvement with organizations such as the Laura McPhee Memorial Fund, Asthma UK Charity, Metro Radio, Newcastle, England's Cash for Kids campaign, Save the Children UK, and the Elvis Presley Charitable Foundation, Susan demonstrated her unwavering commitment to making a positive difference in the lives of others. Moreover, Susan's generosity extended beyond the public eye as she quietly lent a helping hand to those in need. One such instance occurred in 2021 when Susan came to the aid of 13-year-old Ashley Easton, who was battling cancer and in need of life-saving treatment. With compassion and empathy, Susan took proactive steps to support Ashley's cause, auctioning off one of her dresses on eBay to help raise funds for the critical medical treatment. In a candid revelation in 2009, Susan admitted to the public that she was a virgin and had never been kissed, a revelation that captured headlines and added an unexpected layer of intrigue to her burgeoning fame. For years, Susan maintained a private and solitary existence, focusing her energy on her music career and charitable endeavors. However, in 2014, reports emerged suggesting that Susan had found love with a boyfriend she met during her U.S. tour. Described as a doctor from Connecticut, the man was said to be of a similar age to Susan, and the two formed a connection while in Florida. Their relationship blossomed with plans for the boyfriend to relocate to Scotland to be with Susan. Despite initial optimism, the relationship ultimately came to an end in June 2019, marking a bittersweet chapter in Susan's personal life. Following the breakup, 
Susan embraced her newfound status as a solo woman, proudly declaring herself a happy single fish. It was a declaration of independence and self-assurance, reflecting Susan's resilience and inner strength. Since then, Susan has maintained a low profile regarding her romantic life, choosing to focus on her music career and personal growth. When pressed about her relationship status, Susan remained coy, suggesting that any potential future relationships would likely be platonic in nature. With a hint of playful humor, Susan remarked, I've been on my own too long now to get married, hinting at her contentment with her current circumstances. Reportedly, in her first year of prominence following her breakout on Britain's Got Talent in 2009, Susan reportedly earned a staggering $5 million equivalent to approximately $6 million today. This influx of wealth marked a monumental turning point in Susan's life, affording her newfound opportunities and financial security. As her career continued to soar, so too did Susan's earnings. By 2023, it was speculated that she had amassed a fortune exceeding $40 million or about $48 million, a testament to the enduring appeal of her music and the global impact of her story. Despite her immense wealth, Susan remained remarkably grounded, opting to maintain a modest lifestyle that stayed true to her roots. In an act of generosity, she purchased a five-bedroom house for $300,000, approximately $361 to $500 today, intending to move out of her old home. However, she later decided to gift this property to her niece, choosing instead to stay close to her Blackburn family home. Susan's commitment to her roots was further exemplified by her purchase of the semi-detached house next to her family home for $111,000 or $133,000 today. Rather than seeking extravagant accommodations, Susan joined the two houses and renovated them from the inside, creating a warm and welcoming space adorned with cherished memories of her parents. Despite her millionaire status, Susan remained surprisingly frugal, adhering to a weekly budget of $300 to $500. She emphasized that material wealth held little importance to her, expressing a genuine desire to entertain and uplift her audiences through her music. Susan's helmet and down to earth, the manner endeared her, to fans around the world solidifying her reputation as a beloved icon. When asked about her indulgences, Susan admitted to splurging on a few luxuries, including a fur coat and a piano. However, her modest lifestyle and unassuming demeanor spoke volumes about her character, reflecting a woman who valued sincerity and authenticity above all else. Throughout her journey, Susan has been surrounded by a supportive network of friends and neighbors who are fiercely protective of her. Despite her celebrity status, Susan continues to embrace the simple joys of life, often indulging in karaoke nights and relishing in the company of loved ones. In a surprising revelation, Susan disclosed that she only obtained her provisional driving license in June 2019, signaling a newfound sense of independence and adventure. With plans to start driving more often, Susan is poised to embark on new adventures and experiences embracing the free om that comes with navigating the open road. Following her 10th career anniversary in 2019, Susan has maintained a degree of silence regarding her future plans, leaving fans and industry insiders eagerly anticipating her next move. While rumors circulated about a potential Las Vegas residency in 2021, nothing materialized, leaving her fans in suspense. One thing remains certain, Susan Boyle remains steadfastly committed to her partnership with Psycho Entertainment and her mentor, Simon Cowell. She credits Cowell as the biggest inspiration in her career, striving to make him proud with every performance and endeavor. Despite opportunities for greater global success, Susan has consciously chosen to prioritize her connection to Scotland, viewing it as her true home. Proud of her Scottish heritage, Susan finds immense comfort in the beauty of her homeland and the warmth of its people, embodying the true spirit of community. As retirement looms on the horizon, Susan remains resolute in her determination to continue pursuing her passion for music.
Age, she believes, is merely a number, and she sees no reason to slow down anytime soon. With a career that continues to inspire and captivate audiences around the world, Susan Boyle's legacy is poised to endure for generations to come. In the eyes of music critics and journals, Susan Boyle's talent and resilience draw comparisons to legendary vocalist Ella Fitzgerald. Like Fitzgerald, Susan's exceptional voice and enduring career defy conventional standards of beauty, proving that true talent transcends societal norms and expectations. What do you think about Susan Boyle's current life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.